Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we get to talk about Don the Dragon Wilson in Blood Fist, next on Warehouse Beat. Right off the bat, a little disclaimer. Don the Dragon Wilson was one of those martial arts stars I, I didn't see as a kid. You know, you had your A-list guys back in the 80s and 90s, like Van Damme and Seagal. And you kind of had your B-list movies, you know, with Don the Dragon Wilson and Jeff Speedman. Not to discredit Wilson at all, because he's like, you know, an 11-time world kickboxing champion. But I didn't get to see a whole lot of his movies, so I'm just now discovering them. And I had a lot of fun with Blood Fist. You know, you can say what you want. It is kind of a take on, like, Bloodsport or Kickboxer, which came out the same year. I'm not sure which one came out first. But that's not to discredit the movie. It's still a lot of fun if you're just going to sit down and have a few laughs and a drink, maybe. Uh, we're going to get into the plot just real briefly here. So basically, you've got Don, and his brother is fighting over in the Philippines in this underground fight tournament called the Ta Chang. And he's supposed to take a dive. He doesn't, he goes on and wins, and he ends up getting killed on his drunken walk home. And so the story starts there, and you've got the character of Jake Ray, played by Wilson, and he comes over to the Philippines to try to find his brother's killer. And along the way, he gets uh, lumped into this Ta Chang. So when he gets over to Thailand, his brother, oddly enough, has been cremated. And so he goes to uh, identify the body, and so he gets this urn. <laughs> so, you know, he's spreading his brother's ashes there. Um, as he's trying to unravel who the killer is, you know, these, these kids steal his bag and he jumps them. And this guy ends up seeing him and mentoring him to fight in this Ta Chang. And along the way, he also meets this character played by Michael Shaner. You might remember him. He was the jumper in Lethal Weapon that Mel Gibson handcuffed himself to, and, you know, jumped off that building. Well, he's actually a pretty good martial artist and he's in this movie. His name is Terrible. It's Baby Davis. <laughs> His parents didn't know what to name him, so he just became Baby. How they meet's pretty cool. He's playing poker with these guys because gambling's a big thing over there. And he's bluffing. He's got a pair of twos. And he's got to lose all his money. And uh, he goes over to Jake trying to start a fight. And he's like, hit me. And so Jake throws him, and he lands on the table and grabs all the money and takes off. And so from there, they form a friendship. And they're both fighting in this Ta Chang. But before he can fight in this tournament, uh, he has to be trained up, of course, by his uh, sensei, his mentor, whose name is Kwong, which is a horrible name to try to say in a review. It just doesn't roll off the tongue. But there's a pretty good training montage where he's punching this bag and it's full of goat crap. He's like, what's that smell? And he tells him what it is. Um, great scene where he runs up the side of this volcano. It's actually an active volcano in the Philippines. And Wilson's gone on record as saying he will never do anything like that ever again because it was so dangerous. But there's like a helicopter shot up above as he's running along the top, the vent of this thing. And that was a really cool shot. Really appreciated that one. And along the way, Jake ends up falling for baby's sister, Nancy. And, you know, they have a pretty gratuitous sex scene with boobs and everything. I really appreciated that scene for what it was. But <laughs> they get to the tournament and there's all kinds of of interesting people in this tournament. Chin Wu is the favorite to win. Just about every fight he has, except for that finale there with Jake, he kills his opponents. And, uh, you know, that's pretty wild. You've got Billy Blanks, the Taibo guy. Uh, he's the Black Rose. And, of course, they fight there in the semis. Just uh, kind of like Bloodsport, and it had a nice array of characters. In the first round, Jake beats this Frenchman who insists on fighting with, I believe he had like earbuds in or something. It's like, who fights like that in a tournament? It was weird. But he takes him out. He beats the Polynesian guy in the second round. And, uh, you know, as he's getting closer and closer in between to finding out who his brother's killer was. And so 
it's funny, Nancy, his uh, love interest, is actually learning to speak this language. And so she's going around trying to figure out who the killer is for him. And of course, in the semifinals there, as I said earlier, he ends up fighting Billy Blanks, the, the Black Rose, and beating him. They have this really cool where they jump up and they both do a flying kick and hit each other at the same time. Only he gets up and the Black Rose doesn't. And also in the semis, you have Baby Davis against Chin Wu. And, of course, Chin Wu ends up hospitalizing Baby. And so they go and he's in a coma and ends up dying. Of course, his sister's in hysterics trying to get Jake not to fight him in the finals. But, you know, he's fighting for the honor of his brother, now fighting for the honor of his friend. And so he ends up fighting Chin Wu in the finals. They have a really good fight. Of course, Chin Wu's whipping Jake all in the beginning, and Jake makes his comeback. Takes him out kind of like he was taking everybody else out. I'm not sure if he killed that character or not. I guess we'll find out. There's like eight other Blood Fist movies. I'm at least going to watch the next couple, so we'll find out if Chin Wu's a recurring character. And it's kind of funny that the day this tournament took place, Jake's partner out in L.A. flies over to the Philippines. And he's kind of helped unravel some of the mystery as well. And Jake, actually, at the beginning of this fight, when he's getting whipped, he's been drugged. And he doesn't realize it, but Kwong, his teacher, has drugged him. And so his friends unraveled it for him. <laughs> and it's funny. Jake's drugged, and his friend's talking. Everything's in slow motion. Jake! Kwong killed your brother! It's, <laughs> it's slow-mo, and he sounds kind of demonic. It ma that scene really made me laugh. But after the fight, of course, Kwong takes off. Jake takes off after him, and we find out that the fighter that Jake's brother killed in the first scene of the movie was actually Kwong's brother. And to get revenge, he killed his brother, knowing that Jake would come over, you know, to see what all was going on and then take care of him as well. So now the last fight in the movie actually becomes between Jake and Kwong, and it's actually there where his brother was killed. And of course, Jake ends up impaling him on this fence, and Kwong dies. And so Jake gets a little bit of closure there as, as Nancy comes in and they have this last scene as the credits roll. But that's pretty much Blood Fist in a nutshell. And I really appreciated it. You know, as far as like a low budget film, this was put out by Concord and actually produced by Roger Corman of New World Pictures. So, you know, it's kind of low budget, but they did a lot for what they had. You know, those ambitious shots of the volcano running through the streets of the Philippines. Um, the fight scenes... I heard another reviewer who I respect say that he didn't really care for the fight scenes. No, they're not as crisp as like Jean-Claude Van Damme, who really knows how to shoot and frame a fight scene. You know, you can tell some of these they're kind of missing in these shots. Um, but it's it's still pulled off fairly well there. Uh, Don the Dragon Wilson, for the most part, I didn't feel like he was acting in a lot of these scenes. He just came across as natural. And Michael Shaner is Baby Davis in this movie. I'm glad I got to see him in something other than, you know, just that one scene in Lethal Weapon. He was way over the top in this, but that character was a lot of fun. And I appreciated him and his sister, Nancy, the dancer. I really appreciated that one scene in the middle of the movie. But anyway, as far as things in this movie that are pretty wonky, um, the sound in this movie, the audio... So, like, whenever they punch somebody and there's blood, it's really squishy sounding I, I don't know who the sound uh designer was on this movie but you can tell the budget was pretty low there um whenever they're kicking people man like wilson's like roundhouse kicking somebody and it sounds like a cannon shot just going off and i i did appreciate that but it was just a little bit over the top and speaking of the audio levels there's two scenes in this movie where there's crickets and i'm not talking just silence i'm talking actual crickets in the movie um there's a scene where just before the sex scene where jake and nancy are talking on top of the roof and there's like a cricket somewhere on the roof and i don't know given the capability of 1989 if they could have taken that out or tried to find the cricket and get rid of it and take a second take but it's also there in the final fight which is so out of place because you're in this temple with people screaming and it's just like Where's the cricket coming from and why is it left in this movie? And speaking of audio levels, so there's this crowd noise that's panned in and it's like the same crowd noise on a two second loop over and over and over. So it goes really high and comes down and goes really high and comes down. And it's just a little bit off-putting 
when you sit back and listen to the crowd during these fights. So there's that with the audio. And then, like I said earlier, some of the fight choreography is just a little bit off, but you know, it's not too off to make me just dislike the movie. Uh, overall, I appreciated Blood Fist for what it is. I hear Blood Fist 2 is even better. So I probably will review that for this channel. Uh, we'll see how this video does. But I did have a lot of fun with this movie. Overall, I would rank Blood Fist a 5.7 out of 10. It does have its issues, but it is a lot of fun. Like I said, it's one of those Friday night beer and pizza type movies. You know, invite some friends over and just have a good time and laugh. And this was a pretty good introduction in, to Don the Dragon Wilson's filmography. Like I said, I'm going to check out Blood Fist 2. Might get into some other things. Uh, we'll see what happens there. But guys, uh, I appreciate watching Warehouse B, me and Brandon and Kenny. We, we really appreciate your support. Coming up next on this particular section of Macho Movie Madness, I believe me and Brandon are going to get together and do Deadly Prey, which is going to be so much fun. We originally recorded with uh, our friend Chris back in 2019 uh, a Deadly Prey review. And... Of course, we ended up, you know, having some personal problems. A Macho Movie Madness went away for a while there. And I think we lost it on Chris's hard drive or thumb drive or something. And so I was going to do that one by myself. And I said, no, that one really needs to be done with two people because there's so much fun uh, to be had with Deadly Prey and just laughing at that movie and how ridiculous it is. So expect to see that one coming out next as episode 13. But guys, yeah. Until then, I'll see you down the line. This is Andrew, and we'll see you next time on Warehouse Speed.